show me! How long are you going to take? What time are you coming home? What are you doing with Skylar? It's already this late. Where have you been all morning? You didn't even come home to make lunch. I've been at the hospital to have a checkup. I reminded you when I left this morning, didn't I? And I think I told you that I would have this checkup a week ago when I made the appointment. I mentioned that I wouldn't be able to prepare lunch for you. I'm thinking of going to my parents' house to let them see Skylar. I'll spend a few hours there, and hopefully Skylar will be able to have a nap before I come home. Skylar was only born last week! You can't parade her about outside all day! You've got to bring her home right now! It's already this late! I can't believe you could be so irresponsible! Don't you care about Skylar at all? She could get sick! This late? It's still 1.30. And there's no need to be so overprotective. I've taken precautions for the sunlight and we're only going to see my parents. It's not like I'm taking her to meet everyone I know or pushing her pram through a crowd of sick people. I'm following the doctor's advice and making sure she has undisturbed rest and gets her milk. I wouldn't do anything that I didn't think we both can't manage. But you can't keep her away from me this long. She's already been away from me for three hours. Skylar needs me. You can't do this to her. Give her back to me. What are you talking about? She's not a thing and she's not yours. I've decided that I'll raise Skylar myself. I can't trust you with her. I've watched how you've been with her for the past week and it's obvious that you're no good as a mother. You don't know how to take care of her. If you raise her, she'll end up unhappy. Or worse, she'll be unhappy and she'll be rebellious. It's people like you that end up raising criminals. I can't just stand by and watch you ruin her life. The best thing for Skylar is if you give her up. I'll raise her as my own daughter. She's mine, so give her back. Skylar's my first child, so... Of course I don't expect to be able to do things perfectly all by myself. That's why I've been listening to all the advice you've been giving me this week. And I'm really happy that you're helping, but no matter what I do, you keep on complaining that I'm doing things wrong. So that's what you're thinking of me. I'm doing my best to help you. How can you be so ungrateful? I bet you think that I'm in the way, don't you? You're the one that's living in my house. I'm letting you stay here. I'm providing the roof over your head and I don't even ask for rent. I've done so much for you and this is how you repay me? This is why I never approved of Daniel marrying a woman like you. You were the one that asked that we move in with you. Daniel and I were living together in our own house after we got married and we planned to stay there. But you wanted us to all live together. You were the one that said you always wanted to live with your grandchild. You pretty much forced us to move in with you when she found out that I was pregnant, and I had to go through all the trouble of moving house when I was already really big. Why do you have to put it like that? I never force anything. Just ask Daniel. He was delighted to move back in with us. I've done so much for you. It wouldn't hurt for you to show a little more appreciation, too. Can't you at least say thank you? I think I deserve a lot more, but I shouldn't expect anything from you. Appreciation? I had a lot more of that when I first met you. But ever since I married your son, and you started to show your true colors, it's become a lot more difficult. Especially after we moved in together, and you wouldn't stop making hurtful comments about the way I did chores and the way I prepared dinner. The stress and fatigue just piled up and up, and I couldn't please you no matter what I did. I didn't know you could get any ruder. When have I ever made hurtful comments about anything you've ever done? If I've made comments, it's just because I'm giving you advice as your senior in life. If you think I've been hurtful, it's because you're trying to make me out as the bad person in this story. I'm an adult too. I understand the difference between advice and sarcastic backhanded comments. And it's not just those comments. You don't like the food I make, even though I've done my best to follow your recipes. And if you really don't like my cooking, then you can always make your own. 
but you insist on having me prepare your serving too. And sometimes you throw it all away right in front of me. It's not just insulting, it's wasteful. Did you really think that I could just brush that off as advice? I don't understand how you could do something so mean just for the sake of showing me you don't like my cooking. I threw it away because it didn't taste good. What's the problem? Did you really think that it was good enough to serve to Daniel and my husband? Nobody would want to eat something disgusting like that, so I saved them the trouble. I just did what they would have wanted to do anyway. If anything, you should be thanking me for not letting them eat something as horrible as that slop you call food. That's what I'm talking about. In the past few months we've spent living together, you've never eaten my food without making a face, a comment, or throwing it away. On top of that, you were making me do all of the housework right up until the birth. I couldn't have a moment's rest while you were around, even though my back hurt and my feet hurt and I was so tired. Even when my contraction started and I was begging you to call for an ambulance because Daniel was out, you wouldn't call and told me that I was overreacting. I couldn't even get to the phone myself. I thought I was going to give birth right where I was. It wasn't until Robert passed by my room and noticed that my water had broken that I was finally able to go to the hospital. I'm grateful for my father-in-law's care and consideration. But if you want me to be grateful for you, then you'll have to do something I can be grateful for first. You shouldn't expect everyone to do everything for you. You could have gone to the hospital by yourself. You're so spoiled. It shows that your parents must have been overly protective of you as a child. No wonder you're so disrespectful towards me. Did you really think that I could drive all the way to the hospital safely when I was getting contractions every five minutes? Even after I gave birth, you didn't say anything to me. You didn't ask me how I was doing. Not even a word about how well I had done. Even though I was in labor for 15 hours. I was too busy thinking about Skylar. What did you expect? My first and only priority was the baby. So what if you gave birth? It's nothing special. I gave birth too and you don't see me begging everyone for praise and compliments. I didn't expect you to compliment me. But I think anybody would be happy to hear something from family. And anything would have done. And I'd like to remind you that I was only discharged from the hospital a week ago. I've been waking up over and over in the middle of the night to feed Skylar. I haven't had any sleep at all this past week. I'm still trying to get used to a lot of new things, a lot of new emotions, and a new sleep routine. And I'm literally all over the place. But you're still making me do all the housework. I thought you said that it would be better for us all to live together because you'd be able to help out with the baby. But you haven't been doing anything. Even though Daniel and his dad say that I don't have to do anything, to rest when I can and not to push myself too hard, I have to do everything while they're at work because you won't do anything. Oh, you really are spoiled. You are the one that married my son, not the other way around. What's the point in having you here if you're not going to do the chores? You can't seriously think that you can spend your days just laying around doing nothing. You're being childish if you think that's how things work just because you've moved in with us. I'm here to be with Skylar, not with you. And you shouldn't expect everyone to be nice and kind to you just because you've given birth. So what? That doesn't change anything. You're sorely mistaken if you think you get to slack off just because you've had a baby. The only one we all care about is Skylar. I couldn't care less about you and nobody else does either. We only need Skylar. I can't believe you're not going to even bother to hold back your punches. I take it you mean that there's no use for me at your house if I'm not going to do all of your housework for you? That's right, I'm glad you finally understand. We only need Skylar to make us happy. I don't need a rude, disrespectful, annoying daughter-in-law like you around the house if you're not even going to do what you're here for. 
Even if you did do the chores and prepare our food, you're so useless I end up having to redo everything you do anyway. You're just wasting my time, and having you here is a waste of space too, so we don't need you here. So you think I'm rude and useless. All right. What, am I wrong? I don't think I said anything you couldn't understand. I made it quite clear. We don't need you in this house. To be honest, I'd prefer if you'd leave as soon as possible and never come back. You don't have to worry about Skylar, she'll be in good hands. We'll raise her without you. I think that's best for her as well. She doesn't need a useless woman like you as her mother. I just want to check. If you want me to leave, then that means you don't want to live with me, doesn't it? How many times do I have to tell you? I don't want to live with you, and I want you out of my house, do you understand? Yes, I do. I understood that perfectly. Then I won't be coming back. I'll be staying at my parents' house. They've got a spare room that I can use, so there's no reason for me to return today. I'll go and get my things another day. Will that make you happy? Of course, do whatever you want. You're an adult. I don't care where you stay as long as it's not in my house. Nobody in this house is waiting for you to return anyway. I'll have Daniel go and collect Skylar from you when he gets home from work. So make sure she's had her rest and you've got all her things ready by then. I'll let you spend these last few hours with her at least. You're not going to come back to this house, so this will be the last time you ever see her. I'm glad you've finally come to your senses. You're not fit to be a mother. I understood the part about not coming back to stay in your house, but you're wrong about one thing. I am not handing my daughter over to you. Skylar is staying with me. I'm her mother. What are you talking about? I just told you that you're not fit to be a mother. Are you going to take her away from me? You can't do that. She needs me. Oh, you think that I'm not fit to be a mother because I need support to raise her and because I can't handle all of the housework on just one hour of sleep a night? You expect the impossible from me. You're saying that I'm taking her away from you, but you're not her mother. She was never yours to begin with. She's my granddaughter. That makes her mine. I don't think that your way of thinking that she belongs to you is very healthy for Skylar. I don't think that raising her in an environment where you think that you can treat me however you like is good for her either. Daniel and Robert have both lost their patience with the way you've been treating me. I know that the both of them have done their best to talk with you privately and get you to change your attitude. But it still hasn't changed after months. And if it's only going to get worse now that Skylar's born, I'd rather not live with you either. Your own son and husband have given up on getting you to change your ways, so there's no way I can keep hoping. Robert as well? You're lying. I remember him mentioning something about you, but I I've forgotten what he said. It didn't seem very important. But I know that they all hate you. Nobody wants you to stay in our house, and we're all happy that you've finally given birth so we can get rid of you and keep Skylar. Who's they? Do you mean Daniel and Robert? Because I know Daniel loves me, and Robert is a wonderful father-in-law. And even if they did actually hate me, I think they'd be more mature about it. You've been far from mature these past few months. You've been passive-aggressive and childish at best. All you've done is bully me and make me feel bad about myself. I've had enough. We've all had enough of your behavior. If you're not going to fix it, then there's no point sticking around and waiting for you to change. I'm not returning to your house. And if you won't reflect on your actions, I won't let you meet Skylar. You won't let me see Skylar? That's ridiculous! You can't do that! You can't keep her away from me! You have no right to do that! I'm not going to listen to a woman that can't even raise a child properly! You don't have to come back, but I'm not letting you keep Skylar! Give her back right now! Skylar will be happier that way, and you'll thank me one day when you realize that! 
She belongs with us, not you. We'll raise her, so don't be so selfish and give her up. I'm sorry, but who's we? Daniel, Robert, and I. The three of us will raise her without you. I know that we can make Skylar a million times happier if you're not around to ruin her life. She doesn't need a failure of a mother like you. You should give her back to me for her sake. Robert's actually with me right now. Daniel will be here soon, too. He's already asked his manager for the rest of the day off after he's finished in his meeting. The truth is, it wasn't a hospital appointment I had this morning. I'm sorry I had to lie, but you wouldn't let me leave the house until I said that I would be going to the hospital. What? Then where were you? What were you doing? I was being honest when I told you that I would be going to my parents' house, but I was somewhere else this morning. I went to have a viewing of a house with Robert to get his opinion. You went to see a house? But why would you do that? I didn't tell you to leave my house until an hour ago. And why would you need my husband's opinion? Daniel and I have decided that we're going to move out. And when we told him, Robert was very interested in the idea too. Maybe you should ask him for the details when he returns home tonight, since I won't be coming back, ever. But why would Robert be interested in looking at a new home? Daniel and I have been thinking about moving back out, ever since we first moved in with you and you started to bully me. We've both hit our limits, and we can't take it anymore. It's too stressful being with you all day, every day, and he doesn't complain. But I know it's tough on Daniel when I vent after he's had a long day at work. It's been hard for the both of us. The only reason why we didn't move out earlier is because it was a strain on my body to move our stuff to your house in the first place, and we didn't want to go through that again. Hit your limits? Stressful? What's that supposed to mean? You're just exaggerating. How pathetic. All I'm doing is showing you how to do things properly. Daniel's had enough of your behavior, too. He can't stand the way you speak to me. And he knows that you've been throwing away the food I make as well. He knows about how you follow me around when I do the laundry and the washing up, nitpicking at every single thing. He promised me that we would make preparations so that we can move out as soon as the baby is born. And he kept that promise. He found a few places that were open for viewing and cut the choices down to two places so I wouldn't have to go back and forth. When we spoke to Robert, he offered to pay half of the deposit saying that he wanted to come with us. Excuse me? Robert wants to move out? Well, he was obviously including me when he said that. He meant that he wanted to move in with us and move away from you. Apparently, he's had enough of your attitude as well. And since you won't change, no matter how many times he's spoken to you, he's decided to leave you. He's telling me that he left the divorce papers on the table in the living room. Have you seen them? He says that he's already signed them, so you just have to sign your side and leave them there. He'll have them filed tomorrow. I found them, but... I don't understand! Why would he want to divorce me? I haven't done anything to deserve this! Answer the phone! I want to speak to my husband! He's with you, isn't he? Let me talk to him. I can't trust a word you say! Why would I lie? Those papers have already been signed, haven't they? I wouldn't fake his signature just to trick you. Robert says that he'll talk to you when he gets home, but he, that he's already made his feelings clear in past conversations. You just haven't been listening to him properly. Anyway, we're busy getting our new home ready. Could you wait until later? I don't understand why Robert and Daniel have to move away too. I only said that you don't need to come home. What about me? What am I supposed to do? They can't leave me here by myself. Robert says that he'll give you that house in the divorce. He has no need for it if he's moving in with us, and he doesn't want you causing us trouble just because you can't find a new home for yourself. You're lucky he's being so generous. Daniel and I have no intention of living with you ever again. And of course, we're not going to give you our daughter. Robert's decided that he wants a divorce, and that he doesn't want to live with you anymore. 
I think that explains everything you want to know. What about me? I'm going to live here all by myself? You're not making any sense. Why can't I come with you? Weren't you listening to what I said? We've told you over and over that the way you've been treating me is unacceptable. We wouldn't have had to do this if you had fixed up your attitude and stopped behaving so immaturely. If you had listened to your own husband's warnings and your son asking you to stop treating me so horribly, we would have never decided to move out. We would still be living with you and you would still be able to spend time with your loved ones. But unfortunately, you haven't shown any signs of changing or even feeling bad about what you've done. You deny all responsibility, and we've had enough. Because of your selfishness, you'll have to spend the rest of your life all alone. What about Daniel? What does he think? He can't be serious about leaving his own mother all alone. I raised him. He's better than that. He would never abandon me like this. You've tricked him into thinking I'm the bad person and convinced him and my husband to follow you. Have you forgotten? That Daniel was the one that was always intervening and defending me from you when we first moved in? He was doing his best to keep himself between you and I when he could. And making sure that I wasn't stuck with you alone when he was at home. But then he had to start a new project at work. And was coming home tired more often. And didn't even have the strength to argue back the things you were saying to me. The stress of work and your treatment of me was accumulating for him too. That's when he promised that he would find us a new place to live. We realized that the best way to deal with the situation was to just put space between us and you for the sake of our physical and our mental health. You're lying. Daniel would never want to leave me. And Robert can't be serious about getting a divorce. At this age, I'll never be able to get remarried. I'll be alone. Can't he rethink the divorce? I'll do anything. He's not honestly thinking we should get divorced, is he? You'll have to talk to Robert directly about that. Though he says that, there's nothing more to say. And we've already chosen a new home that has enough room for the three of us and Skylar. Robert is welcome to live with us, but there's no room here for you. Moreover, Robert's actually put a lot of money into this house for us. He's been very considerate since Daniel and I had to pay a lot for the hospital bills last week. We don't plan on telling you where our new address is, either. But I'll never be able to see Skylar ever again! Are you honestly going to separate us? I'm not going to let you see her. You'll have to show that you can change first. I don't know if you can, but if you want to see her, you'll have to. I don't plan on meeting you until then, either. I'm sure you don't care whether you see me again or not. But I just wanted to make it clear that this is what happens when you treat someone as though they're inferior to you. You end up alone. What did I do to deserve this? Why is everyone leaving me behind? You're telling me that I have to spend the rest of my life, my elderly years, all alone? That's too much! You don't have to go this far! I thought I would be able to spend the last 20 years of my life taking care of my grandchild. I wanted to have peace and quiet and not worry about any of the chores or worry about money. This isn't what I wanted. I was dreaming of my life as a grandmother. But now I'll have to get a job. I have to do everything myself. I won't be able to see my family. That That's not fair. Really? <laughs> I guess you hoped that I would be the one to take care of all the chores and plan to live off your husband's savings and pension, all without lifting a finger yourself. But you ended up breaking that dream with your own hands. You should have been more respectful towards the people around you if you wanted them to love and take care of you. I am tired of you complaining about every little thing I do. But now, you'll have to do everything yourself, and you won't be able to see your family ever again. That's the price you've paid. You'll have to accept it. Fine, I understand I made a mistake. I shouldn't have been so nagging. I'll do my best to get on with you from now on. 
I'll change the way I've been acting towards you. So please don't move out. It's too late for that. We've already paid the deposit and signed the documents for the house. We won't change our minds about living away from you. And we'll be moving all of our things into the new place over the next few days. We're all going to live here in peace without you. Robert will be returning to your house this evening to pack up our essentials, so you should have a good long talk with him then. He'll be staying there until all of our things have been moved. But he's quite adamant about having the divorce, so I suggest you forget about talking him out of it and talk about how you can make an effort to change your behavior. That way, you might have a chance to meet Skylar in the future. Naomi, I'm sorry. Let's all live together. I don't want to be alone. I think we might have gotten off to a bad start, but I'll change. I'll do whatever it takes. I'm sure you'll come to understand why I was so harsh towards you. It was for your sake, but I won't do that anymore. Just, just let me see Skylar. I find it hard to believe that you'll change when you're still making excuses. You can't even apologize properly. It's too late after all. You can't change. Besides, you were saying yourself that you don't want to live with me, remember? I confirmed over and over, and you said that you wanted me to leave. Well, I don't want to live with you either. I hope you'll enjoy your final years without a rude, useless woman like me in the way. <laughs> After her conversation with Naomi ended, Kim had no choice but to wait for her husband to come home. The first thing Robert did when he returned to the house was to tell Kim that he wanted a divorce and that he wasn't going to change his mind. He checked that she had signed the papers and took them to his lawyer to have them filed. He didn't speak a word to Kim after that and spent his time packing away all of his things. Anything that had to be dealt with regarding the divorce was done through his lawyer and he was able to move houses without much fuss. Kim got the house in the divorce but it was brought to her lawyer's attention that she had spent Robert's savings on several occasions without his permission, and as a result, the amount she received in alimony payments decreased significantly. It wasn't enough for her to keep up the payments for the household bills, so she had to find a job in order to earn some money to pay for other essentials. She was so desperate to meet Skylar that she went to Naomi's parents' house and demanded that they tell her at Naomi's new address. It didn't occur to her that she should have just shown Naomi that she was making an effort to change. In the end, Naomi's parents called the police because of how aggressive Kim was being, and Kim was taken away in a police car to be questioned. Kim was not only divorced and looking for a job, but had also been slapped with a restraining order from Naomi's parents. On the other hand, Naomi and Daniel were living happily ever after with their small family and were looking forward to having their next child. Robert was delighted he was freed of his selfish wife and was taking great pleasure in taking care of his granddaughter. I saw what you made for lunch. Can't you put in a little more effort? I spoke to my wife about it, but she says that you've been nothing but lazy all these days. Why are you making my wife do all the laundry? She's not your maid. We're letting you live under our roof, and I think that you should show gratitude by helping with the housework. I'm sorry that you feel that way. I have really bad morning sickness and it's difficult for me to get out of bed. Your wife has been helping me since I'm not well enough to do any housework. Being pregnant doesn't give you the excuse to stay in bed all day. Pregnant women are so entitled. I'm a senior, but they still expect me to give up my seat on the train for them. I feel them staring at me, but I never give in. I'm old and I should be allowed to sit down if I'm tired. Having a baby inside your belly doesn't make you any more important. Well, I'm sure that the health condition of each pregnant woman differs, so it's hard to say, but there are times when we feel so sick that it's nice when someone offers us their seat on the train or on the bus. I mean, most women experience pregnancy, so it must not be that hard, right? You shouldn't be making such a big deal out of your pregnancy. It makes you look stupid. Do you have to put it that way? I'm hurt by your words. We're letting you live with us. I think that I have the right to tell you how I feel. My wife can't say no because she's too nice, but I think that you should take her for granted. You should make her do all the work by herself. 
I'm sorry to have to say this, but I don't think I'm the only one making your wife do everything. Don't you think that you could offer to help her as well? How could you say such a thing to me? Your wife has a job too, so she can't do the housework all by herself. Whenever I see the two of you, you make your wife do everything for you. I did help out before I got pregnant, but right now I'm really not feeling very well. My obstetrician told me to take it easy and not to work very hard. I do feel bad about not being able to help out around the house, but I don't think that you're in a position to call me out like this. What the hell? You're being very disrespectful to me right now. Besides, it's my wife's job to take good care of me. We're married. Then why do you expect me to take care of you too? What? I'm married to your son, so shouldn't my main job be to take care of your son? We may be living with you now, but it's temporary. I didn't think that you'd give me such a hard time. I know that right now I'm more of a nuisance than help, but don't you want me to take care of my health? I don't think that I'm causing any inconvenience to you. You're just using your pregnancy as an excuse to not help out. I'm sure that you could if you wanted to. How can you make these assumptions about me? You have no idea how bad my morning sickness is. Only a person who's experienced pregnancy firsthand knows what it's really like. I'm a man. I can't get pregnant even if I wanted to. I know that, but I'm just saying that as a man, you can't begin to understand what being pregnant really means. You shouldn't get angry with me over something so small as me taking it easy during my pregnancy. I'm not angry. I'm just asking you to help out my wife more and be considerate. At the very least, you should do your own laundry. You are angry, I can tell, but why do you need to be so angry? Huh? You tell me not to be lazy, but I'm not being lazy. I'm being a responsible mother by resting and making sure that there's no harm to my baby. And even if I were being lazy, that's my choice, and you don't have the right to make me act a certain way. You don't control me. I do have a say. You're living under my roof, and so you should do as I say. Why should my wife have to work so hard just because you don't want to do your share of the housework? I'm sure that you have the energy to wash the dishes. You act like you're getting angry for your wife, but are you sure that this is what she really wants? I feel like you're the one that's angry with me because you can't control me like you want to. Have you ever considered that your wife is a caring and understanding person who genuinely wants to help me out during my pregnancy? Don't patronize me. You're starting to irritate me. If you want to continue living with us, I suggest that you get out of bed and take care of your own chores. Well, how come you don't do any of the chores then? Do you enjoy bullying me? Does it make you feel more important than me? Do you think that I'm picking on you because you're pregnant? Because I'm not! I'm simply trying to get you to take some responsibility for what's expected of you. Since I'm living under your roof, I'll try not to get on your nerves so much then. Good, because you should wash your own dishes after you use them. And don't rely on my wife so much. Do what you can on your own. Okay, understood. If I see you lazing around my house again, I'm going to kick you out. I'll be careful then. I need to go now because there's something I need to take care of. Has my dad been giving you a hard time? I'm so sorry about this. Mom says sorry too. It's okay. It's neither of you or your mother's fault. Your mother apologized to me earlier. She's been taking really good care of me ever since I got pregnant and I'm really grateful to her. I realized that your father was doing all of this on his own and had nothing to do with your mother. I'm glad to know that you're not letting it upset you. My mom was worried that my dad was stressing you out. She thought that maybe it would be better if we didn't live under the same roof anymore. She has a point, but I guess right now it's not the best time to move out. We don't really have time to look for a new place to live. And I plan on staying with my parents during the last month of my pregnancy, so you don't need to worry about me. I'll try to stay under the radar until then. I feel bad for your mother, though. Your father makes her do everything. Yes, I know. I told Mom not to overwork herself. She says that she's okay, but I feel like she pushes herself too hard sometimes. I know that I'm not much help right now, but I do want her to know that I'm here for her in case she ever needs me. It'll make my mom happy to know that you said that. But for now, I want you to concentrate on your health and your pregnancy. I'll take care of mom. Yes, thank you, Ted. <coughs> Melanie, I need your help! What's wrong, Ted? My dad is in the hospital! 
Is he alright? Which hospital is he staying at? His condition is stable for now, but it seems like he's really sick and he needs to be nursed. At one point, we thought that we were going to lose him. Oh, that's terrible! And my mom, she didn't react in the way that I predicted. I'm quite shocked, to be honest. What do you mean? When are you coming home? Did Ted tell you about my condition? Yes, he told me. I hope that you're feeling better. I plan on staying with my parents a little longer. My wife can't take care of me on her own, so I need you to come home and help out. I'm sorry, but I don't think that I can. But I'll eventually, so please wait a little longer. I also understand that you're not well, but that doesn't make me want to come home sooner. I have other priorities. How can you say that? I don't think that I can be of any help. Besides, I need to take care of my two-month-old baby. I don't have the time to take care of you. I'm sure that you don't want to live under the same roof as a newborn baby. They cry a lot. Can't you have your parents take care of the baby? Don't you think that attending to me is more important? I'm the one that's sick here. Huh? What makes you think that I'd prioritize you over my baby? I'm not asking for your opinion. As Ted's wife, it's your obligation to take care of me. Besides, your baby is perfectly healthy. You don't need to <laughs> take care of it. You're crazy! Of course my baby needs me. In what world would I leave my baby to take care of you? I don't even like you. You're not making any sense right now. What's your point? You just don't get it. You're delusional. I don't think that I'm crazy like you. You're asking me to come take care of you and leave my baby with my parents. That's pretty crazy. Weren't you the one that said that we have to take care of ourselves? Don't use your illness as an excuse to laze around the house. That was exactly what you said to me when I was pregnant. Huh? I don't think you can say anything back to that because you're the one that made this rule up. We're so not in the same situation. Pregnancy is not a sickness. Okay, so maybe it's not exactly the same, but I'm going to react in the same way that you did when I was pregnant. I'd rather die than take care of an old, ill-tempered man like you. How dare you, Melanie? You ungrateful bitch. I should have never let you under my roof or marry my son. What will Ted think when he hears this from me? I think that he'd take my side, so I'm not worried. I'm grateful that you let us live with you, but I'm mostly thankful to your wife because she was the one that took care of me when I was pregnant. But it's not like we lived with you for free. We paid a very generous sum to you. I don't think that you have the right to be so condescending. Don't you understand why your wife doesn't want to take care of you? Oh, so you heard about that too. I've been taking care of her financially all these years and she decides to turn on me when I need her the most. I'm really angry with her too. I mean, I could just kick her out of the house if I really wanted to. Actually, I think that that's a good idea. Why don't you suggest that to your wife? But I think that you need her more right now than she needs you. You couldn't take care of yourself before, but now that you're sick, you need your family more than ever. I don't think this is the time for you to be picking a fight. You're so despicable to me. I'm the man of the house. Don't you know how hard I work to support my wife and Ted? I don't, and it's really none of my concern. <coughs> how can you say that? Your wife has been working part-time for a long time now because you didn't earn enough money to support the family. And now she's been promoted and is working full-time. On top of that, she does all the housework all by herself. She's been nothing but a great wife to you. You're the one that's being ungrateful. She's my wife. It's her job to take care of me! Then I suggest you start earning more money and start doing your job as her husband. What's your problem? This is between my wife and I. Stay out of it! I was just trying to get you to see things from a bigger perspective. You only see things your way, it seems. So when are you coming back here? My wife isn't willing to take care of me, so I need you to come home ASAP and take care of me. I don't understand why she won't. I'm pretty sure that she's trying to put me in a retirement home, but I'd rather live in my own house. I think that it's best for everyone if you moved into a retirement home. I mean, we can help you cover the costs. We're more than happy to. 
I don't think that your wife wants to live with you anymore. She'd be much happier on her own. <laughs> so, she told you about her plans then. I want her to take care of me at home. Doesn't anyone care about what I want? All you talk about is what you want. How about you start thinking about what your family wants as well? Your wife doesn't want to take care of you and neither do I. And even if you don't end up in a retirement home, your wife plans to hire a professional to take care of you at home. Ted and I are in complete agreement with your wife and will fully support her decision. And Ted and I don't plan on living with you anymore either. What? Ted's being relocated to an overseas office where we won't be back to Japan for several years. How come no one ever mentioned this to me before? Did we need to? We knew that you were going to oppose the idea. The only reason why we were living with you during my pregnancy was because there was no point in renewing our lease if we were eventually going to move overseas. Your wife was kind enough to let us live with you, and I was planning on having the baby close to my parents' house, so... We never got along, but because I knew that we weren't going to be living with you long term, I was able to put up with your bullying. I never bullied you! You're the only one that seems to think so. I'm off now. I won't be seeing you for a long time now. Adios. Please say hi to your wife for me. Hold on a second. Are you really moving overseas? Don't think that you can get away with not taking care of me. I'm busy taking care of my baby, so there's no way that I have any time to spare for you. Good luck fighting your illness, but not for too long because you don't want to be a burden to your wife. Goodbye now. <coughs> Ted and Melanie moved to the U.S. the following month with their newborn baby. Ted's father was very grumpy because his wife refused to care for him. In the end, he had no choice but to move into a retirement home. After Ted's father moved out of the house, Ted's mother was relieved and could spend her time as she wanted. She flew to the U.S. to spend time with Ted, Melanie, and her grandchild. For Ted's mother, it was the start of a new and exciting chapter in her life. Hey, good afternoon, Kathleen. How are you doing? Have you finished off the work for today? Wrapped everything up? Yeah, I have. I've been done for a little while now. Why? Did you need something from me, Sandra? Oh, just checking up on you to see how you're doing. So, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking me. This is about Mom, right? That's why you're asking me? Yeah, that's exactly right. You saw right through me. I was really worried about what's going on there after everything, you know. Oh, thank you so much for your concern. It was definitely shocking for sure, with my mother's passing and whatnot, you know? But I've really bounced back now and I'm doing much better, so... We've already finished cleaning up around the house and everything. Everything's already been sorted and whatnot. Yeah, so about that, you're gonna be okay with Charles taking over the house? That's not gonna be a problem, right? Excuse me? Have you not spoken to my brother yet? Well, actually, he's been going away on business trips for quite some time now. I don't have much time to really sit down and talk to him at all, but, I mean, he's the older brother, so... That should be the way things go, right? I mean, that's true, but he's always away on business, just like you said. That's why he didn't really want to bother doing anything with the paperwork and whatnot, so... I was going to do all of the paperwork for him to take over all of the inheritance. We already agreed that I would be handling all of that. Excuse me? Handling all of that? What the hell are you talking about? Why is that already being pushed forward? I didn't even hear about this story at all. Well, we were all at our mother's funeral. I spoke to my brother and discussed everything with him. You said that you had to be somewhere because you had something to do and to take care of. So you left midway through, which is probably why you didn't notice us talking. Was that what happened? I don't really remember anymore. But I really don't think that you should just sell everything. That's literally the worst idea I've heard in a long time. Pardon me? It's literally a really valuable house that's built on great land. Why would you two just get rid of it all? And that brings up the question of, if you are going to get rid of it, who's going to be taking all of the money from the sales? I'm 
I'm sure you're planning on taking it all and keeping it to yourself, right, Kathleen? That's not gonna fly at all, okay? The eldest son, Charles, is the one that deserves to take all of the money from the house. I've already spoken to Charles about all of that, you know? Is it alright if you just listen to everything he has to say from now on? I've already settled everything with him and he's already aware and agreed. And just because I take the inheritance doesn't mean that it's all free. It still costs a lot of money in taxes. I literally can't live in that big house all by myself anyway. It's just going to be a waste of money, you know? It's just going to be way too much work paying for taxes every year all alone. That's why we both agreed to sell the house. I'm never going to let that happen, you understand? I'm going to move from my house, and I'm going to start living in that house. Actually, that was the plan from the get-go anyway, so I don't know why he agreed to that. We're going to be terminating our lease this month anyway. Wait, what? Hang on. Are you talking about the place that you're living in now? Yeah, the place you've been before. We were actually coming up on a renewal soon. Next month was the last month of our contract, so... Okay, and? And it costs money to renew the contract, you understand? If I just live over there in that house, then I don't need to pay rent, right? It's literally free. That's why I've decided that we need to move out of this dinky little apartment and move into that nice house. So please, just don't go selling the house all on your own like that. You're seriously going to be causing me a headache. I mean, I'm sorry for causing you a headache, but I really didn't hear anything from my brother about you all coming over here to live in this house. I just told you a second ago. Literally just now. Is there a problem here, Kathleen? You're starting to annoy me. This shouldn't be an issue to begin with. That house is literally basically Charles' birthright. So I'm going to be living in that house, you understand? Which means you need to pack your things and get out of that house. Pardon me? What do you mean? I mean, I need you to be out of the house by the end of the month. I'm going to be moving in, and I'm going to be bringing Carl with me, too. Have you already spoken to my brother about this? Or was this all decided on your own? No, I haven't talked to Charles about any of this, but to be fair, he's going to agree with this decision anyway. I mean, come on, he's gotta like having a bigger house. It's better for the kids, too. Have you thought about that at all? Okay, I was planning on leaving anyway, but... Just because you live here and you don't have to pay for rent doesn't mean that it's going to be any cheaper than it is now. It's still going to cost a lot of money for electricity and whatnot because it's just an older house. That's why I'm staying at this house for now, but I'm going to sell it and get rid of it because it's too outdated to even renovate. Okay, yeah, sure, whatever. Just be honest with me for a second, Kathleen. You're just upset and jealous that Charles and I are going to be taking your parents' house, right? <laughs> That's not what I'm saying at all. You're seriously going to be hard-pressed living here, Sandra. You really need to talk to my brother about everything because this is starting to get out of hand. I've already reserved a day for the movers to take all our stuff to that house, so... Sorry to break it to you, but you're going to have to leave by the end of the month. If you're that dead set on staying there, then can you be sure to watch Carl for me? If you're okay with watching Carl for me, I'll be okay with you just staying in my house. I'm sorry to break it to you, Sandra, but the house is already my house. It's not even my parents' home anymore. And we've already found a real estate agent that's willing to put this house up for sale. It's already all been decided and there's no going back now. The fact that you're bringing this up right now, after all this time, kind of makes me think that maybe there's another reason other than you just wanting the house. It's just a little too expensive for us to have to renew the lease because we don't have too much money. Besides, it's kind of a waste, isn't it? We can just live there for free. 
To add to all of that, if we didn't have to take care of your mom and all of her needs, I would have lived there way sooner. But now she's gone, so everything is solved. Are you telling me that you were waiting around for my mom to pass away so you could hijack the house? I wouldn't go that far, Kathleen, but you know, the house is empty now. Let's just keep it at the whole situation has worked out in everyone's favor, okay? Because I don't want to have to pay for any more rent than I need to. Why are you struggling that hard on my brother's pay? Isn't he working really hard? What do you mean? I know that he goes away on business trips a lot for sure, but... I know that he gets compensated for his trips accordingly. If you just live a regular life, you honestly shouldn't even have to worry about anything and be able to save money while you're at it. Why are you in such dire debt to where you can't even renew your lease? I don't understand how you could be struggling that desperately for money. That, Kathleen, has nothing to do with you at all. You need to mind your own damned business, do you understand me? You know, Sandra, normally I'd be inclined to agree with you. But this time, you're trying to move into my house without any kind of permission, and you're telling me to leave. So, I want to know what is draining so much money from your house to the point where you can't even renew your lease. A lot of things cost a lot of money, Kathleen. Things you wouldn't even understand. We have a kid, you know. They can be really expensive. Whatever, if you live with Carl and I, you'll understand what it's like to live with a kid. Maybe then I wouldn't need to explain anything. I feel kind of bad now that you mention it, though, asking you to leave the house immediately. Maybe I can reconsider my whole idea of just kicking you out. If you want to stay with us while we're there, you can stay with us. I'm going to be taking the biggest room of the house, though, just so you know. And you'll have to be taking care of Carl for me, so <laughs> good luck with that, okay? I just called my brother and had him check up on everything, but, um, he said that he was checking his bank account from his phone, and apparently all of his checking accounts are bone dry. Care to explain what's going on, Sandra? What? His phone? You can check your bank account using your phone without going to the bank? Yeah, you can check through online banking apps nowadays. How did you not know this? He was just letting you handle all of his finances up until this point. He never really checked his accounts or anything because, you know, he trusted you with his money. But he said that you've been acting way too suspicious recently, so he wanted to check up on everything. What have you been using all of the money on exactly? I haven't used any of the money, nothing special anyway. Whatever, we're going to be moving into the home and that's that. You understand and agree to this, and there will be no arguing, understand? Okay, so that means that you will be buying the house and taking it off my hands. Am I correct in my interpretation of what you're suggesting? Excuse me? What are you talking about, Kathleen? Why are you saying that I'll be buying the house? It's literally my house to begin with, so I can't buy it off of you. I'm not going to be spending a single penny to buy anything off of you. I'm sorry to break it to you, but I've already put in all of the paperwork to sell the house to someone. If you want the house that badly, Sandra, you'll have to do it the right way with all the paperwork going through the real estate agent. But to be honest with you, Sandra, I'm not sure about this. This house kind of seems a little too big for you to be living in all alone. What are you talking about living alone? I'm going to be living in that house with Charles and Carl. We're all going to be there. You can actually live there for a short little while if you'd like, Kathleen. Actually, my brother just told me he has no intention of ever living with you anymore. What? I'm telling you that he said that after he gets back from his business trip tomorrow, he's going to be talking to his lawyer about all of this. He apparently intends to be divorcing you, Sandra. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. What are you talking about, Kathleen? He would never keep such an important thing from me. 
There's absolutely no reason that he would be talking to me through you, especially not about something that important. He hasn't said anything to me about anything either. I mean, maybe he really wasn't messaging you because he was busy messaging me, but... The message that you sent my brother a little while ago? Maybe you should recheck who you're sending that to. What? What message? The message you intended to send to your partner that you're having an affair with? You've made a mistake somehow and managed to send it to my brother instead. My brother just sent me this photo a second ago and showed me what he saw. I'm going to be over to your bar again, Kenny. You just hang out there for me. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to secure the house real soon, too. That's totally talking to someone you're having an affair with, right? There's no real wiggle room there. I totally made a mistake. Please delete that photo. You really don't need to be sending me anything. You shouldn't be sending me crap like that anyway. Yeah, okay, whatever. You've really screwed up this time, haven't you? Just so you know, my brother seemed to have his suspicions already. This kind of just nailed the coffin. He was already having you investigated by a private investigator. Wait, is that true? You're totally lying, right? None of this is real. So apparently with this whole moving thing, and the fact that you've used up so much money that you don't even have money to renew the apartment lease? I'm pretty sure he was fed up and decided to just get a divorce right away. This was the last straw. This is all a misunderstanding, don't you get it? I'm literally not having any kind of affair. It's just a bar that I go to often because it's a nice little bar. He just happens to work at that bar, don't you understand? Oh, come on. Let's be real. It's one of the bartenders that work there, right? What? I mean, yeah, it is, but... But if anything, we're more like friends than anything. We get along like friends and nothing more than that. Sure, it was a little more than just as a regular customer, but... So in other words, you had a bartender sweet talk you and woo you into going back to his bar regularly, right? You don't seem to want to admit that you're just another customer at this bar, but it sounds like you don't want to even admit that you're being fooled and used by this bartender. <laughs> I'm not being fooled. What are you talking about, Kathleen? Once we move into that house you're holding on to oh so dearly, we're going to be living together. Eventually, that's the story anyway. Ah, so that was your real intention. Now it all seems to make sense. And to add to everything, you finally admitted all this. Wait, hang on just a second, Kathleen. You can't just delete it now. It's too late for that. <laughs> I've already sent everything that you sent me to my brother. What? What the hell? What is it with you siblings and sending everyone and each other screenshots? Anyway, none of this is relevant to me, like you so kindly said earlier. If you want to buy this house and live in it, you're going to have to go through my real estate guy and his agency to buy it at full price. It's not my brother's at all. I own it outright. The whole house is in my name. And even if it were to belong to my brother somehow, I'm pretty sure he's dead set on getting a divorce, so I don't think it matters anymore anyway. Would you agree with me, Miss Sandra? What are you talking about divorce? Charles isn't answering his phone at all. What the hell is going on here? I don't think he wants to talk to you right now, Sandra. He's probably pretty <laughs> fed up with you. Anyway, Sandra, we're strangers now. We have nothing to do with each other at all. So if you don't mind, could you stop messaging me or calling me, please? Please don't be like that, Kathleen. Come on, we're great friends. You could help me out and be the middleman between my husband and I. We were basically sisters, you and I. We were super close. You leave Carl all alone at night and go out to a bar. Not only that, but you flirt and sleep with the bartender. I definitely don't want someone like that thinking that she's my sister, even if she is an in-law. I never left him alone at night. I didn't do any of that. 
You understand everything is pretty much already figured out, right? And that everything you've been doing can be considered child neglect and abuse? Of course, I'm going to do everything within my power to make sure that my brother will be having full custody of Carl. You just need to be ready to pay for any and all damages you may owe my brother and any child support he's going to be asking of you. I think it's in your best interest to do that right now, while you still have a place to stay. I've already contacted the movers, though! I can't just take it back, right? Ugh, what should I do, Kathleen? I don't know what to do! How about you just move away, then? You're going to be getting a divorce anyway, right? I hope you don't struggle too much to find a new house that you can live all alone in. Alright, goodbye, Sandra! I won't miss you, you selfish ex-sister-in-law. <laughs> Charles went to the lawyers as soon as he finished his business trip and made it back home. He started on the paperwork and discussions for moving the divorce forward. He was already gathering all of the necessary evidence for the divorce, apparently. Sandra was in a situation where there was no chance in the world that she would be able to talk her way out of this one. After he was easily able to prove that she was guilty of child abuse and neglect, she lost all chances of any parental rights over Carl. Not only that, but she was sued for damages. Charles moved into a brand new house with Carl. Sandra, on the other hand, was unable to move at all because she ran out of money. She went back to her parents' house, but she was eventually chased out of her parents' house as well. Right now, She's living at her part-time job storms and trying to pay off all the damages she was ordered by the court to pay off.